Do you just love to assemble new toys? Maybe, but then again, maybe not. When you get your new rose, you're really excited, but a little bit intimidated about the prospect of having to put all those pieces together. Well, the folks at MagicCraft have taken into consideration ease of assembly when they designed the MagicCraft rose. It is so simple to put together, it practically assembles itself. Watch me as I quickly and easily assemble my MagicCraft rose so that you'll know what to do when you decide to add yours to your collection. I'm Jennifer Johnson with Whispering Pines Farm. My husband and I raise a wonderful flock of soft Shetland sheep. I'm also an authorized MagicCraft dealer and I'm committed to holding inventory of the entire MagicCraft line so that you don't have to wait to get the tools and equipment that you need to spin your dreams. I've provided a link in the description of this video, so scroll down and check it out. You can get more information about the wheel on my website. Before I go any further, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. I really hope that you find it helpful. And you can help me by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons in the bottom of the video here, as I work towards my goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of September. No more talking, let's get this gorgeous wheel put together. So I've got all the parts laid out on the table that I need. And I also have the assembly instructions and these come in your package, but you can also download these from the web if you misplace them. Two additional items you're gonna need when you do your assembly are a positive drive screwdriver and they spec it out in the manual. You also wanna have some petroleum jelly, Vaseline handy so that you can lubricate the shaft once you get everything assembled, when it's time to put your bobbin on the, the flyer shaft. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to install the bolt stop. And that's the first step in the manual. The manual is a little inconsistent with what you're actually going to get when you receive your rows. So I'm going to go through that with you fairly carefully right now. The purpose of the bolt stop is when you have this installed, when you're shifting your stem from right to left or when you're engaging the, the handle, um, it prevents the stem from going so far that your head, when it's installed, hits the treadles. And so it's a pretty important step. What you're going to do is you're going to take the shortest bolt that's in the kit, the shortest JCB bolt, and you're going to be using the four millimeter Allen wrench that comes with your rose kit. The drive wheel is installed with the stem when you receive your rose wheel now. So you're going to have to remove this handle nut, this little wooden nut, and set that aside, and then ever so gently lift your stem assembly up off of the wheel. Set that there, and I'm going to move the wheel out of the way just for one second. Flip your stem assembly so that the rose design is facing down, and then you're going to see this little insert, a threaded insert, which is where the JCB bolt needs to be inserted, but you can't insert that until you set the stem assembly and the handle at a, a right degree angle. Because what's gonna happen is when you put that bolt in the little threaded insert, it's going to engage in this little groove that it's gonna slide on whenever you move your handle back and forth. All right. And then we're going to put the bolt in there. And it should go in really easily. If it doesn't go in really easily, then stop and readjust. But if you've got this at the right angle, it should be just fine. Just take it right to when it stops. When you reach the stop and you can't twist it any longer, that's where you stop. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. And the, the idea here is now that's going to work along that groove inside. Okay, so let's bring the drive wheel back up and get that put back together. Set it up here now that the rose design is facing up. Put this back on the drive wheel shaft. Slide it down. That plastic bush sometimes might get caught, but that's okay. And then we're gonna take the wood nut and set that right back on. Them. and a nice hand tight real gentle I don't super tighten anything at this point we can all we can always tighten things up at the end once we're done with the assembly all right so there see now that stop is engaged and it prevents it from 
swinging down and hitting the treadle. So that's great, perfectly installed how we want it. Okay, next step. The next thing I gotta do is we gotta put the stem assembly, which has the drive wheel attached, into the, the base. The base has really nice rubber feet that prevent it from sliding while you're spinning on a hard surface. For now, that's gonna also help me to stabilize it while I'm installing it. So I'm gonna set it on the hard surface so it's nice and stable. And then I'm gonna insert the stem assembly. So there are two threaded inserts for the JCB bolts on each side of the stem. So awkward. <laughs> you can see those. And then there is a threaded insert on the bottom of the stem as well. So that's why you have the three JCB bolts. You're gonna use your four millimeter Allen wrench for that. There's the hole in the bottom of the base that your third JCB bolt is going to go in once you get the top two done. So when you're doing this installation, the rows should be facing you and the um, flat part of the drive wheel should be to your back. And that's assuming that I got the Magicraft engraving here in front of me. All right, and I'm gonna slide this stem into position into the base so that those bolt holes line up. Okay, just trying to eyeball these so they get lined in there. Good. Now I got my cloth back so that I can set this down to install the final third JCB bolt on the bottom side. In the bottom. Nice and hand tight. So now the stem and the treadles are assembled. I'm pretty happy with how my JCB bolts are seated in there. Tighten up a little bit more. Okay, that much closer. So when you look at your manual, the manual is going to next tell you to install your pedals and it's also going to have you installing your drive wheel. Well now they've made some changes to the assembly. Those things are already done for you. So you can skip those next two steps. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the spinning head, which is this right here. All right, so one of the really cool things about the Magicraft design for the rows is that the stem comes in these two pieces. There's two sides to the stem. And you put your head in between those two. But you can do it two ways. One way would be you can have it so that your flyer shaft is on your right, but you can also flip it over and set it up so that it's on your left. And it also can be anywhere, it can be placed anywhere in between these two boundaries here. So if you want a lower orifice or a higher orifice, this gives you that flexibility. So it's a really cool set up. We're going to take our four millimeter Allen wrench and there's a JCB bolt in here that we're going to remove. Taking care not to misplace the spacer, this little wooden dowel that's in the center here. Pull that out, remove the dowel. And then with your brake knob on the same side as your, your rows, you're just gonna slide the head down until it passes the hole for the JCB bolt. And then we're just gonna re-engage the JCB bolt. Put the space in there. <laughs> Still 
it so you can see. The next thing we're gonna install is the pulley. I'm gonna put the slow pulley on for this assembly. There's your flat on your wire. So that's where your grub screw is going to seat itself to put the grub screw, which is inside of your little, your pulley. There's your grub screw. And you're gonna take your two millimeter Allen wrench, insert it in the head of the grub screw to tighten it and loosen it as you're doing this assembly. So the grub screw is loosened up so that I can slide my whorl on the shaft. And I'm just gonna eyeball to make sure that my grooves of my whorl line up with the grooves of my drive wheel. Tighten it to the right. Now this one you wanna make sure it's pretty tight. And the reason for that is you'll hear people talking about a clicking and a rattling and stuff. And that's just because the, the whorl is not seated nicely on there. So that's good. Time for the drive band. You want to put the drive band on before you attach your crank assembly. Let's grab a groove here. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be really tight. Oh! <laughs> Which is good. That's what you want. So you got five grooves on your slow whirl and five grooves on your drive band so that gives you so many different options for ratios and stuff. All right, so the drive band is now installed. Now it's time to install the crank assembly. There are three holes in your crank assembly and they line up with the three holes on your drive wheel. We've got three screws that have a different kind of a head. It's called a positive drive head and you do need to have a special screwdriver for that head, it's not a Phillips head. All right, so they line up nicely. There's a pattern here where there's two close together and one kind of separated off on its own. You just move the wheel, move the parts around just to make it so it's easy for you to find the holes to thread the screws in. Screw those in. I've seen videos where they talk about when you change your drive band to remove these pieces. I don't do that. I actually remove the joiners and I'll show you how those get installed here in a second. I'm going to rotate the wheel just to get access to that last screw. All right, so when you're attaching your con rods, it's really important that they get installed with the right con rod to the right pedal. The, the way to do this is set it up so that you're facing the rose design and the con rod that's closest to the drive wheel is gonna get installed on, the, on your left. And then the con rod that's furthest from the drive wheel is going to get installed to the right. And it's another nice thing that they've done here is they've kind of carved a one on the bottom of the con rod here and they've carved a one on the pedal. So you'll know that that's the correct matching. The other thing that's really important when you install these, you got to make sure that this part is on that bearing perfectly straight. You don't want it touching either side of that crank. You want it to be free so that when you're treadling, right, it's not rubbing up against those two pieces of metal. You can use the Phillips head on these wood screws on the treadle. And they're in, they're already installed in the treadle. I think in the manual it says you have to put them in there. Unscrew them enough so that the tip of the screw is recessed back into the wood of the treadle. Okay. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this so that the crank assembly is at the top of the wheel. That makes it easier to make sure that you're beautifully aligned. Now I'm gonna shove the rubber joiner down into the treadle, just enough so I can feel like two millimeters protruding out from the bottom. Happy with that. And then I'm gonna thread the screw and it's, it's going through that rubber piece. So you're gonna feel a little bit of resistance, but that's okay. 
because you're just you're just possibly creating a new hole in the rubber and just do it so that your head is seated in there nicely you don't have to over tighten that one either that's pretty straight okay now we're just going to loosen the other screw just enough so that that little tip of the screw isn't there and then slide the joiner in give yourself a couple millimeters of play So that's, that's the Conrad's to the pedals. Okay, all we have left to do now is to install the bobbin and the flyer. So the plastic bobbins come with the wheel and sometimes there's little plastic burrs on the inner diameter of your bobbin. So it's okay to just kind of work that a little bit on your threads. It feels like it's pretty good. I'm going to take just the tiniest amount of Vaseline, petroleum jelly. Do not overload your flyer shaft with lubricant, just a little bit. And then go ahead and install your bobbin. Put the brake band around the groove. Tighten it. So you've got a little bit of tension there. And then just install your flyer. Now normally if you're sitting at the wheel, you can install it by treadling. I'm just gonna rotate my wheels and then I'm gonna tighten it. Another reason why you wanna have a good tight um, attachment with your whirl is because I use that to tighten my flyer. And there she is. Beautiful rose wheel. I can hardly wait to start spinning on her. I almost forgot to show you um, assembly of the beautiful bobbin holder lazy cake. So let's do that now. So it's just as simple as taking the three bobbin shafts that come with your rows and inserting them in these little holes in the cake. in there. It does take a little doing but not too bad. So you're just it's just really just putting them in there by force. And then there's this nifty little perch. And it goes that for your whorl and the magnet to hold your two millimeter Allen wrench which is or yeah, what you're going to use to install your whorls. And then you just put your bobbins on there. Oh, this is so nifty. And there it is. How cool is that? I love it. 